In this video, we're looking at awesome techniques that you can use with Excel's filter function, maybe the best function inside Excel. Now make sure you watch to the end because the techniques just keep getting better and better. And by the end of this video, you're gonna be a filter function ninja. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start by understanding the filter function. It has three arguments, but the second argument is the most important. So let's start there. So here in Excel, if we type equals, and then I'll select my type column, and I want to check where that is equal to the value in cell I4. I press return and we get trues and falses. Everywhere where it has the value of true, that is where our value in the type column matches with the value in cell I4. And it's the items that return true, which will then be returned by the filter function. So back to this cell equals filter, open bracket, and we want to filter our entire data set, but we only want to return the items where it returns the value of true. Then our final argument is what we want to display if there are no values. So let's have no values. Close that bracket, press return, and you can see it only returns the items where that item is commercial. If we change it to residential, our filter function then updates. If we change it to something else, you can see we now return no values because nothing matches. So that's a quick overview of filter. The most important argument is that second argument, the true or the false determines which value is returned. What about the scenario where we want multiple conditions? How can we handle that? Well, it's all about that same true or false value. So in here, we can type equals, we can select our type where it equals commercial. We know that that will give us a true or false value. So all we need to do is if we want an and condition, we can multiply that by another condition. So for example, where our annual rent is bigger than 5,000, we will also wrap this in brackets. And when we press return, we now get ones and zeros and ones and zeros are equivalent to true or false. So if we now put this inside the filter function, filter, open bracket, our table, that's our condition. And then we want to have no values. Close that bracket. It now returns where it's commercial and it's more than 5,000 in rent. So that's an and condition. We can also use an or condition. To do that, what we do is rather than a multiplication, we use a plus symbol. And when we press return, we then get the value where it's commercial or it's greater than 5,000. So that's how we can do multiple conditions. The last argument of the filter function determines what value is returned if there are no values to return. Here in this example, we don't have a final argument. So that means that if I change this to something else, that we get a hash calc error. So what we can do is provide a value that we want to return instead, no values. So that just gives us a single value in that column. But what if we want to display something across that entire row? Well, instead of a single value, we can provide an array. So in curly brackets, we can provide a value for each column. So the first column will say no values, then not applicable, not applicable, zero, and then zero. So now that is the value that we see as our result when there are no values to return. Unfortunately, the filter function doesn't allow wildcard characters, but we can still search on a partial text string. Here's how, equals search, open bracket. The first argument of search is the text to find. We want to find the road from I4, and we want to find that within our property column. We'll close that bracket and press return. Now where it says 10, that means the word road starts at the 10th position. Where it doesn't find the word road, it returns an error. So what we do is that we wrap this in the isNumber function. And when we use isNumber, it shows true if it contains the word road or false if it doesn't. So if we then add our filter function, so we want to filter our entire table based on that partial text match. And then at the end, we want no values. Close that bracket, press return. And you can see that we now have it where it contains the word road. If we change that to street, it works. If we change it to avenue, 
you can see we get no values returned. So that is a partial text match. Using this concept of true and false, we can filter based on another list. So for example, equals, count, ifs, open bracket, and we want to count our list, and we want to do that on our property name. When we close that bracket and press return, it returns one or zero. So for example, Main Street is in our list, so it contains one. 23 Park Lane is not in the list, so it returns zero. Well, this is equivalent to a true or false result. So we can add filter on our entire data set, counting the items which are in that list. Then at the end, no values, close that bracket, press return. And we now just get the items which are contained in that list. If we add another item to this list, so 23 Park Lane, that now appears in that data set too. So that's how we can filter based on a list. If we add slices to a table and use the right formulas, we can work out which items have been selected by that slicer. So let's go and see how we can do this. I have a cell selected inside my table. I'm gonna to go to insert and select slicer. I want a slicer for the property and also the type column, and then I'll click okay. So now when we click on these slicers, it will reveal various items inside our table. But what we want to do is to capture the items that have been selected by those slicers with a true or false value. To do that, we can use the by row function, open bracket, and we want the by row of our property column, for example. And then we're going to use a lambda function, and we want to use R. So this means that R represents each row within that column. And then we're going to use the subtotal function. Now subtotal will return values if those cells are visible. So if we use count A as the function, it means that it will count the number of cells that happen to be visible. And we want that on a row by row basis. So if a row is visible, it will count as one. If a row is not visible, it will count as zero. So we'll close our subtotal, we'll close the lambda, and we'll close the by row. We'll press return. All of our rows are currently visible, so they display one. If I click residential, you can see that we have ones and zeros. Well, these are just true and false results, aren't they? So now we can use our filter function. So filter, open bracket, on our table, and we want no values. So now we can use our slicers to reveal which items we want inside our filter function. Now this works best when our table and our function are on different tabs. But this example here shows us how we can use a slicer with the filter function. Hi there, I'm Mark from Excel Off The Grid and we're on a mission to help people automate Excel because you shouldn't have to work late just because you have rubbish systems at work. So let us help you to spend less time at work and spend more time doing what you love. Head over to excelofthegrid.com and check out our training courses and that's where we'll show you how you can automate Excel. The filter function reduces the result down to the selected items, but sometimes we want to provide the user the ability to select all the items. So how can we do that? Well, we can do it with the sequence function, equal sequence. Now we want the rows and we want the number of rows from our table. So we'll select any column and we want one column starting at one and stepping by zero. We'll close that bracket and press return. So we now have a one for every single row in our table, which means because one equals true, we can say that if open bracket I4 is equal to an asterisk, display that sequence function. Otherwise, we want the value where the type is equal to I4. We'll close that bracket and press return. So now if we change this to commercial, we get a true or false. If we have an asterisk, we get a one. So that means we can wrap this in the filter function for our entire table. And then at the end, we want no values. So now if we have an asterisk, it displays all the items. Or if we have a specific value, it then filters 
by that value. So that's how we can have a filter all option. The filter function returns all the columns from the array used in the first argument. But what if we want to select specific columns? Well, for that, we can use the choose columns function. Here I have a filter function and we're going to choose so that we have columns one, which is property, five, which is annual rent and type, which is column three. So we use choose columns, open bracket. So we're going to use example eight. That's the name of our table. And then we want column one, five and three. We close that bracket, we press return, and now we only return the property, the annual rent and the type. Now choose columns has two formats. We can have this format here where we separate each column with a comma, or we can provide all of those columns in an array. So one comma five comma three, and that's placed within curly brackets. And that gives us exactly the same result. So that's how we can return specific columns, but also change the order of those columns. Rather than us selecting which columns should be displayed, let's say we want a user to decide which columns they want to see. How can we do that? Well, we can do it with the match function. Equals match, open bracket. I'll just move the tooltip. And we want to match our column headers from our table headers, and we want an exact match. So I'll close that bracket and press return, and it now calculates one, five, and three, the first, fifth, and third columns, and that is returned as an array. So we can take that formula, I'll copy that, and then we come back to our filter function, and rather than our hard-coded array, we can paste in our match function, press return, and now because these are data validation lists, we can select any column we, that we like, and that will return that value into that column. Using the filter function, we can create dynamic dependent data validation lists. In Excel, I've got a data validation list that displays commercial or residential. And what we want is in cell I5 to display a data validation list of those matching items. How can we achieve that? So over here, I'm gonna type equals filter, and we want to return the list of properties where the type is equal to the value in cell I4. And let's return no values. Close that bracket and press return. So now when we change our data validation list, it changes that filter in that list. So all we need to do is to select our cell from the data ribbon, go to data validation, change this to list, then select our cell. So 04 hash, click OK and we now have a dependent data validation list. So residential only shows the residential properties and when we select commercial, it only shows the commercial properties. So that's how we can create a dynamic dependent data validation list. And that's it, we've looked at 10 examples of the filter function and you are now a filter function ninja. So if you want to see our future videos, click there to subscribe and click there for more Excel goodness. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.